So thanks very much. So I suppose one of the reasons that I'm here today is that uh, one of the responsibilities I have is to be accountable for innovation across ESB networks. So today I wanted to just touch on three innovation projects where we are working very closely with the local communities in trying to figure out how we get to this low carbon economy and trying to figure out how we design the network of the future. So uh, the three projects I'll touch on, one is the Dingle project you've just heard of, the other is in Limerick City, and then the third one is in Inishmore in the Aran Islands. So not typically three locations that you tend to bundle together, but for us, they're three very important projects. So the Dingle project, as you saw, um, you know, it's down there in the southwestern corner of Ireland. It receives the full brunt of the Atlantic uh, coastal weather. Um, it offers us an opportunity to look at a small urban network in Dingle Town, and yet within the peninsula we have the rural um, network. So it allows us to really have a test bed where we can trial new technologies, clusters of low carbon technology to try to understand how local people and how cons consumers and future energy citizens will interact and change their behaviours with that kind of technology, and then what's the impact on our network, because we need to be able to facilitate and support support um, the network of the future. The other project that I wanted to talk about is in Limerick City. So this project is called the Positive City Exchange Project. It's a smart city project and it's been led by Limerick City and County Council and a number of other partners. Um, so we're very happy to be involved with it. It's a European Horizon 2020 funded, part funded project. And for us, I suppose, again, looking at very interesting concepts, looking at the idea of developing positive energy districts and trying to understand how people in those communities might be able to, um, to trade their power within that community. So again, very interesting and, and really we're very hopeful of some good learnings from that. And then the third one is in Inishmore in the Aran Islands. And at that project, again, a European-funded project, but one where we're looking to try to combine a sort of battery system with the broader sort of renewables on the island to see if we can create a self-sustainable um, microgrid-type system. Now, those three projects um, are all being done by USB networks in collaboration with other entities, both um, from academia, from industry, and from international organizations. But I suppose... They will not, the three projects will not be a success if we don't have solid engagement from the local communities to try to make, make them work. So for us, they're very much real world scenarios with real world problems. And you know, we heard earlier from the sustainability champions, you know, there are always little problems and issues that have to be resolved when you're looking to try things out, try out the new ideas. So for us, this is an opportunity to go in and learn a sort of a safe environment and try to bring those learnings back into how we design um, a network that will allow us to facilitate the really diverse interests that we're going to have for the customers in the future. I suppose um, for us, we work off the concept of an energy citizen. So the definition that we use in ESB networks around energy citizen is someone who understands that their behavior will have an impact on the electricity grid. In terms of an active energy citizen, our definition for that is that it's someone who adapts or modifies their behavior to create an impact on the electricity system. And so for us, for us on these projects, it's very important to see how we can engage and encourage active energy citizens if we make these, uh, make these work. So in terms of the Dingle project, there were four main areas that we're looking to try to get benefits around. So the first one there is around customer flexibility, and I'll group that in with peer-to-peer -peer trading. And we talked, you saw in the video, here's a number of the technologies that we're looking to try to deploy in people's, um, in other community buildings or in people's houses. But really, it's about testing these lower carbon technologies, having equipment out on the network where we can monitor what's happening at that low voltage level to understand what the impacts are. And also to consider what happens when communities look to trade with their neighbors in that sort of a community environment. And we're hoping that the learnings that will come out of this customer flexibility piece where, you know, essentially in customer flexibility, you're looking to see can these types of technologies provide services back into the grid that will help us perhaps to defer future investments, some of the traditional um, network reinforcement that's required, and perhaps in a, in a cost-effective way in the future. So for us, 
trying to look at what learnings and results come out of this will be used to you know, cr hopefully create information that can be analysed to inform and to share with um, industry and um, policy makers to really look at what are the commercial and regulatory structures that are going to be needed in order to be able to deliver this new kind of energy market. Because at the moment, there aren't those regulatory structures around. Um, also within, I suppose, the, the network um, project, we, heard, we saw Cheryl um, describing in the video about what we're trying to do around network resilience. So you know, we know we're facing into this, you know, changes with changes with in our climate. We know that we need to expect more severe and more frequent um, energy or wet weather events. And in those situations, for us, it's about trying to understand how we increase the resilience of the system, making sure that you know, our continuity of supply and our security of supply is maintained because at the end of the day if we're looking to encourage people to electrify their heat and transport we have to make sure that the network is resilient enough to provide that power when and where they need it. And then as I mentioned we're looking at the active energy citizen. So you know I mean I'll confess now I'm an engineer, right? So I'm not a social scientist, not the behavioral economist. So for me, trying to understand the behavioral issues associated with what is required in this transition to this lower carbon energy system, this is when we've called in the experts. So we're working very closely with Mari and UCC, trying to understand, I suppose, how, you know, and what kind of mechanisms help trigger um, the local community from being sort of interested to being energy citizens to actually moving that whole way towards becoming an active energy citizen. So that's a large and important part of this project. And then what are we doing in Limerick, um, in Limerick City on the Positive City Exchange Project? I mean, essentially, this is a smart, um, smart city climate change pilot where we're looking to see how can you reduce the carbon footprint in an urban environment by revolutionizing how the community or that urban community produces and uses its energy. So this project is funded by, uh, part funded by the European um, Union's Horizon 2020 project. But for us, I suppose there's a lot of international partners and a lot of um, sort of joint learning. So Limerick City, they're the lead on this, Limerick City Council, um, City and Council, County Council, and Trondheim in Norway are the two lead cities in this European project. So the, there are a number of other secondary cities that are looking to learn and look at the follow-up from this project. But very much for us, I suppose, what we're interested in doing is looking at how you develop and trial a positive, um, a positive energy district in the Georgian area of the city. So, you know, if you think about Georgian, the old Georgian buildings, they're not really, you don't really think of energy efficiency in that type of environment. So how you look about creating a, 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 an energy district that actually generates more electricity than it uses and how they might use peer-to-peer sort of -peer trading with each other to try and see how they can create that sort of community energy sort of grid or microgrid. We'll be doing that by deploying sort of smart technology and smart sort of software solutions um, and sort of digital platforms to see how can people more easily interact. And, you know, there'll be, you know, initiatives that we heard earlier from some of the sustainability champions around the energy efficiency and retrofits and trying to see what would work in that kind of environment. They really want the city, that part of the city, the Jordan City, to become an area where you can live, you can work and you can socialise. And at the moment, those sorts of buildings don't really lend themselves to doing that in an energy efficient way. And then I suppose the other part is looking, while we're doing that, is how we're engaging with that local community to create these active energy citizens. And then finally, we want to work with the local authorities around developing an integrated decision support tool, which will really look to try and facilitate and support um, better and faster um, infra integrated infrastructure development in urban areas. I suppose on this project, you know, when you think of this and you think of the Dingle and in the subsequent project in the Aran Islands, we're looking at our network, you know, a network that's over the last 90 odd years has been developed and designed for a different type of system. You know, we had our generation, large central generation, going through the ultra high voltage transmission, down through our distribution network, down to consumers at the lower voltage level. That's a one way system. You know, now we're having to look at our network and say, how do we transition our network to have this two-way interaction allow for these new markets, new participants, as you have this democratization of the energy sector um, when people are looking to decarbonize. So for us, I suppose that's one of the main drivers in getting involved in these projects. 
And then finally, I suppose, it's looking at the project in the Aran Islands. So I suppose three very different projects, one in the peninsula, one in a smart city project, and now looking at an island community. This project is called the REACT project. It's part of a broader European um, project. They tend to get their names by taking an acronym of the, their overall objective, which is renewable energy for self-sustainable island communities. And somehow out of that, they came up with REACT. But I suppose from our side, the three islands, the three main islands across Europe that are involved in this are Inishmore in the Aran Islands, is San Pietro, in, which is a small island off the coast of Sardinia in Italy, and Las Graciosas, in the Canary Islands in Spain. And for us, our role in the Iron Islands project, which has been led by Viola, and there's a number of partners across, across the board there, for us, it's about looking at how, when they're installing a 200 kilowatt battery system on the island, which will essentially be 20 10 kilowatt batteries around community dwellings and uh, residential houses, how does that interact with the network there? How can we create and develop an ICT platform that will allow the islanders participate in a demand response, sort of peer-to-peer -peer trading as part of a local community energy cooperative? And how that can then be integrated with other renewables and low carbon technologies on the island, so other solar, sort of wind generation, um, electric vehicles to try to see can they create a sort of community microgrid that can be um, sustainable, self sustainable in that sense. So that's, I suppose, the objective um, of that project. For us, I suppose, in ESB Networks, we've just recently had a public consultation on our innovation activities, um, all available on our website. The deadline had closed, but for anyone who's interested, if you want to have a look, we're always welcome for feedback. You know, are we focusing our innovation in the right areas? You know, are there, do you have an idea that you think we should be getting involved in? You know, all the details and how to contact and submit that feedback is on the website. So that's something, just a last minute plug just on that. I will, I know it's been quite a short um, presentation. I will be about afterwards if people have any specific questions about the projects themselves or, um, you know, if you wanted to discuss any of the innovation activities, I'll be out and about um, after the session. Okay, thank you very much.